Today's video is a bit of a continuation on from the last couple of videos I posted. I'm going through uh, some piles of junk that was given to me from a local computer repair store that does recycling and electronic repair. It's basically the rejects that nobody else wanted. Uh, I did an Asus monitor that had a shorted MOSFET. That video's up. And then there's an Xbox One, which is actually underneath my printer there. If you can see, it's kind of dark. Uh, that had a shorted uh, capacitor under the APU. And today, it's time again to clean out the closet. So we're going to be taking a look at a Philips 46-inch smart TV. It's not a particularly good TV, but I'll give it 15 minutes, and we'll see if we can figure this thing out. Here's a model number. It's a 46PFL3608- oh, I'm sorry, slash F7. So if someone has this TV laying around with the same problem, hopefully we can uh, save a couple TVs from the landfill. It's got a note on it, and it says mainboard question mark beeps no power. Let's see what it does. Okay, I can hear that. Get this back up. Okay, I don't know if the uh, microphone is picking that up, but you can hear the power supply chirping. You can hear it trying to start up. So that could mean there is a short somewhere, and the power supply is trying to start, but it can't. I'm going to unplug it. Plug it back in again. There's some test points here. Here's a 13-volt test point, and it's just bobbing up and down. This is supposed to be 3.3. It is labeled on the board here on these test points, and and the voltage is just bobbing up and down with with in sync with the chirping. So it kind of confirms that the power supply is trying to start but can't, and it tries and it can't. Uh, so I'm going to isolate some things. I'm just going to start by uh, disconnecting the main board, and I'm going to plug it in again. Okay, the chirping is gone. Check the 3.3, and it has 3.3, and it's steady. It's not bouncing up and down, and this is a 13 volt. Now, it's not getting a turn-on signal, and there are some TVs that will do half a voltage when they're turned off, so I'm not alarmed that that only says 6. And I think this is supposed to be a 21-volt rail, and it's half also. Uh, but the, it looks like the short is gone, so it appears the power supply is not the issue. It appears the main board is the issue. So here's the main board. Now looking back at the power supply, we know this thing runs on three main power sources. We got the 21 volt, we got the 13 volt, and we got the 3.3. Here is the connector where that power feeds into it. And first we're gonna spot the grounds because the grounds is gonna be tied into this strip of copper here. So we can see a couple of pins here and there that are tied to that so we know it's ground. And the main powers are darting off in these directions here. So here's a large group uh, foil tied together and then there's a break and there's a ground in between and then there's another large group so I'm guessing that's probably one of the either the 13 or the 21 and this is probably uh, the 13 or the 21 also so one of these is shorted um, let's find out which rail has the short I'm gonna put this thing in diode mode and uh, I'm gonna hold one lead on ground and I'm going to start with this first large foil path off the connector. And it's 0 0.003, which indicates a short. Let me just check it in the other polarity, the other direction. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's short. And then this, this is going to be ground. And then the next one, this is going to be the other main power rail. That's not shorted. That's, you can see the, the voltage is increasing there in diode mode. That's not a concern. That's, that's not a short. So on this path here... This path here, something is shorted. Um, let's find out what it could be. It could be just about anything. I don't think, see anything discolored. So let's, uh, let's piggyback some power into that rail and see if we can find something that gets hot. 
Here I'm just going to get soldered onto that uh, power rail that has the short. We got a wire connector on there. Okay, and now ground. And I'm going to fire up power supply here. So, um, let's see if I can get everything in view. Uh, so I said earlier, this is either going to be a 13 volt rail or a 21 volt rail. The smaller traces that I didn't check are for 3.3. So I'm going to pick a voltage lower than that so I don't wreck something. Um, I'll just go with like five. And I'm just injecting power into the shorted rail. So that way, whatever is causing the short will get hot. Unlike the original power supply, which has short circuit protection, that's why it was turning on and shutting off. It knew there was a problem, but we're going to force power into it. So there I have positive connected. You can see we're pulling, pulling power. And uh, so whatever is shorted will start to get hot. And uh, I'm going to try out. The Junkie Thermal Cam, which I don't recommend. I do not recommend this model. The resolution's pretty bad, but it kind of gets you a in a general vicinity of where the problem might be. Let's see here. We get a shot on this. Sorry for the uh, jerky motion, but there is a red dot. Come on, everything. Cooperate with me here. See if I can get that again in the top right hand corner. Get rid of some of the glare. There is. See that? Okay, there we go. There's something hot. If we check the rest of the board. Uh, is there some heat there? No, it looks like it's all up in the top right hand corner. Yeah, there's something red there. Okay. And I feel it. I believe. Yep, now my finger feels it. <laughs> it's this cap right here. Right at the top end corner of the board. The inductor is cool. And the chip around it is cool. But that capacitor is hot. So I'm going to remove it and see if the short goes away. Okay, so that capacitor is removed. Let's see if the short, I can get my leads untangled here. Let's see if the short is gone. There's the cap right there. I'll check it in a second. Put this thing back in diode mode. Go to ground. And it was the first main group of power inputs. And it's open. No more short. Let's check the capacitor that I pulled out. And there it is. There's the 0.004 voltage drop. Not good. Not a good capacitor. Um, so what it did, it looks like it is the, here's a, it's printed right here on the board. This is LCD 12 volt. And we know it has what, either a 21 or a 13. So this is either uh, bucking down the 21 or the 13 to make it 12. Um, and the capacitor I moved was on the input side of this little switching chip that uh, runs this inductor, and then these are the output capacitors. So this is what would uh, this is where the 12 volts is going to be on this side, and the one I removed was on the input side, which is just coming from right off the power supply anyway. So I don't think this is probably just like a noise filtering capacitor. I don't think it's super critical. So I'm gonna run without it and see if it works. Again, the output capacitors are still there, so we'll all have a clean. 12 volts. It's just the input side. I don't know what that capacitor is supposed to be. Yeah, I don't know. We'll run without it. See what happens. Got the main board back in. Should be good to go. Let's see if this thing still beeps. Okay, you're plugged in. Let me hit. I don't see any backlight yet. I should see some light come in through these holes. Uh, power button is right here. 
It's not beeping. Once we're going to see if it has image. Oh, wait. Yeah. Look at that. Let me hit the menu button here. Hey. That actually uh, looks good. Um, don't need don't need that anymore. I'm going to put it back together and uh, check it out. So I've been messing around with this TV for a couple days now. All seems well. I'm not going to lose any sleep over not having that uh, capacitor on the that smoothing capacitor on the input side for the 12 volt um, power supply for the TCON. Um, I'm sure somebody in the comments down below will let us know how important that capacitor is. But uh, from my point of view, I took a TV that wouldn't even turn on at all to now it's actually functionable and usable. Uh, the part number, I'm sorry, the location of that capacitor and the model number of this TV will be down in the description below. Uh, so maybe if someone ran into the same TV with the same problem, hopefully this will help them out. And uh, being that this is Philips, half the apps don't work anymore, no longer supported. I believe Netflix will work. Yeah, Netflix will work, I just haven't signed in. Uh, and Hulu's not gonna work because it's a Philips. And Voodoo does work. Voodoo, Voodoo does work and that's kind of nice because you don't need a, a real account to use it. Um, I've actually had Voodoo running for a couple days just to test the TV. Also the flickering that you're seeing is actually just the camera picking that up. Uh, with my eyes here in the room it's not flickering at all. It's just, I don't know, shutter speed, something not syncing up right with the uh, PWM of the back lady and they're not uh, agreeing with each other, but it's actually not flickering. It just looks like it is. But well, I think that is it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.